Good day guys, Austin here and today I've got some very important news for you all so please take heed. The big one will be a warning but I'll get to that in the end because it's slightly depressing and I want to keep this slightly upbeat. So first off then, Rocket Launcher. As you know if you are using a modern version of Hyperspin you will be using Rocket Launcher. Basically Rocket Launcher is the bit with all the bells and whistles which makes hyperspin perform the way you would like it to so in other words it controls all your games it controls the launching of the games it controls the exiting of the games it brings you back it keeps all the information about the games how many times you played it it gives you fade screens it does all kinds of stuff so it's a very complicated bit of kit now it's constantly being developed I mean DJ VJ Broly all the guys over at the rocket launcher forums excuse Excuse me if I've forgotten any names, but all of those guys are all getting stuck in on a daily basis and constantly evolving the program, the modules and everything that goes along with making that work. Now this is first off to give you more functionality, so your you know your systems and your front ends work better. Uh, also they do it to bring in new key features, but also because programs and emulators which work in conjunction with it evolve then also the actual rocket launcher program needs to evolve and that's nothing but good news because at the end of the day unless things evolve we don't get new features and well we just get stuck in the mud now for those of you who are happy with your hyperspin setups and the way rocket launcher works just leave it guys leave it at the end of the day there's no need to update if you've got everything set in place that you want to continue with because you know the old saying don't fix what ain't broken um, but for those of you who are going through the process of actually setting this up now and who want to update then please take my words on board they will help you out and that's what I'm here to do to help you guys out so first off then the first big issue that's been troubling people at this moment in time is as we talked about rocket launcher now rocket launcher has just undergone a major update normally when you go into the rocket launcher folder or when you go to open rocket launcher UI or user interface um, it throws up a, a little window saying would you like to update like me most of the time I don't update unless things are broken and also those of you may just have a fresh install and it may flag it up straight away so you have no option but to update so for those of you doing that there has been a bug and an issue which some people aren't noticing and that's what the first thing I'd like to address. So, this is Rocket Launcher. Here is the fold that you're greeted with. If I was to go in there now to launch my Rocket Launcher UI, it would probably give me a question saying, do you want to update? It's outdated. There we go. New updates are detected. Do you want to update now? Um, just before I do that, I don't know if you can see this in the window. No, you can't see it. But as you can see here, Rocket Launcher, you've got ROM path and then it ends there in the path section. In the base settings here you've only got two options emulator and launch password. There's no other options there either. However with the new update things on this first page will change but because there's no flashing lights or anything like that you don't notice them and if you don't set them it throws you up errors. So now when I update and check for updates it should say I've got 100 and odd errors or 100 and odd uh, files that update. There are 165 files that need to be updated. Normally like I said this would be modules or something like that to get the emulators to work but this one incorporates a major front end uh, or sorry GUI update to do with rocket launcher. But it doesn't really pop out at that one. Do you want to install the updates? Yes okay. Okay apply updates are you sure you want to do this yes I do okay then so yeah basically they've updated the modules which is what needs to happen anyway obviously new emulators come out new uh, transitions new features all that kind of good stuff so this does need pretty regular updates in order for it to work to its full potential with all the emulators it's compatible with um, like I said the problem is that what they did was they updated the front end of this GUI and they didn't really give anybody bells and whistles so 
everybody started to launch their stuff, problems were happening, but nobody could figure out why, because like most errors in all this front-end malarkey game that we're in, um, it, it doesn't exactly tell you what's wrong. You have to go around the houses to figure out what the hell happened there. In this case, if you don't input what I'm going to do now, it will give you an uh, error saying that uh, Rocket Launcher can't find any databases inside its database folder. Well, as we know, because we use Hyperspin, our databases are not in the Rocket Launcher folder. Our databases are in the Hyperspin folder. But that's overcomplicating things. Let's just show you how to fix this damn error anyway. Okay then, so it's complete. Uh, do you want to proceed? Yes. Uh, update complete. Rocket Launcher will now restart since some, some of the update files require it. In other words, we've just changed the front end, but we're not going to tell you about that. <laughs> we're just going to do it and hope that you uh, figure it out from the error which will pop out in a short while when you try and launch a game, but we won't tell you what it is properly. Okay, so as you can see before when I pointed out it ended at profiles path, there was no default front end path. Where's the warning guys? Come on, help people here, please. I know you do an awesome thing over at Rocket Launcher, but you're not very make you're not very you're not making this very intuitive for your average user. We're not all bloody master degree programmers here. Uh, the other thing then, uh, default plugin. Where did this come from? Guys, come on, bells and whistles. Let's start warning people about this stuff. I know that if you go to the Rocket Launcher website, there's a bit of green text somewhere hidden in the forum or on a page that states that this needs to be done, but you're not really informing the world or all the users. Come on. I know, we're just one part of the community, the Hyperspin community, looking in on this, guys. But you need to help people out a little bit. Um, okay, default front end path. Basically, what we need to do is put this where hyperspin is. So, launch it up. And wherever you've got hyperspin, so it's not going to be here. It's going to be in the hyperspin folder. And tell it where hyperspin is. Now, this is my test folder of rocket launcher and hyperspin. So, when I put this path in, it's going to be super long, it's hyperspin, hyperspin, which basically is correct to be honest. Um, so that's the first thing you need to do. Next bit is the default plugin. This come out of nowhere. What you need to do is set this to hyperspin. Make sure you set it to hyperspin and not hyperbin also guys. And that's it. Basically what they're trying to do is add more functionality for more front ends, which is great. I admire that because to be honest, I'm getting pretty pissed off with Hyperspin at this moment in time. And although I will probably keep it no matter what, um, I am looking into various other front ends, as you know at this moment in time, if you've been watching my channel. So that's the first error. That's the first problem that you guys will be encountering. And you won't know what the hell's going on, why? Well, that's it. That's the most simple one to do. Okay, well, there's been another little problem that's been catching you guys out especially for those guys who are brand new to the scene have uh, been either upgrading from the older versions of hyperspin or they've been following my early videos to do with hyperspin or they just don't know what the hell is going on and they're just following my lead well bezels and fades the location of the folders where bezel and fades are located has now changed I know some of you are all amongst this and that you've already done it. So bezels and fades no longer live in the hyperspin folder. So when you get to your hyperspin folder, you'll be greeted with something similar, if not identical to this, depending on what your hyperspin, how old it is and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, if you're using rocket launcher to launch with your hyperspin setup, then the fade and bezels will no longer work if they are still located in the hyperspin media folder so what we need to do to rectify that is they could be in one of two places you could have either a older version of hyperspin so you've got hyperspin set like this but you've also got another folder called hyperlaunch hq and if you was to go inside there you will find a media folder similar to this if you've got the version that i used to show you to set up then you've just got the media folder here all you need to do to get these to work easy peasy guys simple click on here and you will find a folder called bezels 
and a folder called fade as you can see mine's already done so I don't need to go through this process but they'll be simply called a folder called bezels and a folder called fade all you need to do is press alt click on it then click on the other folder so you've got both folders highlighted and then it's just a simple case of uh, right click copy obviously you don't do it to the Daphne and the Sega Model 2 you do it to the fade and bezels folder and then you go to wherever your rocket launch folder is and in there you will also see a media folder go inside there right click and click paste and it will then paste the bezels and fade folder within there as you can see they already exist so it may say you've already got these folders or you've already got these files in here would you like to merge them together in which case you would click yes because although you've already got the media in there you've probably got more media missing from your hyperspin side of it all when you had that running if that makes any sense so basically what's happened is the rocket launcher now takes the bezels and the fade from these folders so if ever you're watching a tutorial and anybody asks you to put your bezels or your fade folders into the hyperspin files then basically no more they now go into the rocket launcher files you wouldn't get an error at this point it would either show you the default fade or the default bezels or it may show you nothing at all uh, so by doing it this way you get to see your fades and your bezels in full glory and no longer non-working so please take my heed and if you haven't done so already move those folders over however please bear in mind back up everything that you do all the time guys whenever you move something over once you know it's stable it's easy enough to just delete but if you delete anything in the middle of the process you can no longer go back unless you've got a nice handy recycle bin anyway let's carry on last problem and then the big warning of woes guys um, the rocket launcher guys again just to make it even more friendly for us they decided not only to change their GUI but they've also decided to change their uh, folder structure <laughs> thank you rocket launcher guys how, how kind and considerate of you to do this and especially considering you emailed each person who downloaded the, your program just to inform them of such you know <laughs> handy work that you've been up to no anyway thanks guys for doing all your work but you're not very handy at passing on the words so here we go guys as we know hyperspin and rocket launcher used to work hand in hand rocket launcher and hyperspin obviously split up and that's how it became rocket launcher for those of you who've been around for I don't know maybe a year now is it um, rocket launcher used to be called hyper launch DJ VJ and his gang over there decided to part their separate ways and work on a, a launcher, I suppose you could put it as, to work on its own, which could be utilized by many front ends, not just Hyperspin, which is an exceptional idea, to be honest. But because it was originally from Hyperspin, many of the logic and many of the, the options within Rocket Launcher are still telltale signs of those days. One of them being, especially in the folder structure, one folder which is called Wheels. Now, why it would a front end <laughs> have a folder called Wheels unless it's Hyperspin? Because it's you know the only real front end which utilizes the names of systems and games and stuff as a wheel. Um, it makes no sense. So they have decided to actually renamed this folder and have now called it logos so if you was to look inside it you can see all the uh, the wheels and stuff that when you was to load a game through rocket launcher in other words when you were in hyperspin and you launched the game you would get the the fancy fade menu um, to go along with that in the corner somewhere as part of the art there will be a, a logo of the system that it's running from or if you've done any personal um, artwork for it it could also display all that kind of stuff but as default it will just show the system 
that it's running it from. So if I was to launch a Sega Genesis game, it would say Sega Genesis in the top corner, and it had the logo in there. Now you can change that to be a completely different logo from that that is in Hyperspin. Um, you know, fully functionality, fully customizable. That's the great features that all this stuff does. But because that was very Hyperspin specific in its naming convention, calling that folder Wheels, it's now obviously across the board more logical to call it logos so a very simple fix to do uh, is just to basically call this logos easy done that's all you needed to do guys for that one it's no longer wheels it's called logos so whenever you launch a system you will now be able to see them without changing the name of that the telltale sign of it not being done would be if once you launched your game on a various system, you wouldn't see any logos anywhere. So in other words, you wouldn't see the wheels. Kind of makes more sense. So hats off to you guys. Just please, when you do stuff like this, make more of a warning. I mean, massive flashing lights, alarm signals all over the rocket launcher forums, all over the website. Make it a splash page of things that people need to take on board before they actually enter the forums and stuff. Otherwise, you're just opening yourself up to countless threads being opened all over different hyperspin forums, rocket launcher forums, uh, pleasure dome forums, everywhere, and things get lost. Just keep things, you know, passage of information. It helps out considerably, guys. Especially for us that don't spend time looking at all these forums and things all the time. Okay, rant over. And that is the manual fixes done. Well done, guys. We've got this far. We've updated everything. And everything should now be tickety-boo. And I will have no more messages in my inboxes all over the place asking me to fix these various things. Well done. Thank you. Now I come with some bad news however and to be honest I would never thought I would be saying this because it's a dark day for me, it's a very dark day. You know my stance guys, you know my stance on pre-configured drives, I know that they do not work guys. Um, some of them have had loads of work put into them and I, I appreciate that, you know, hats off to you, you have stuck at it and you've done it. But first off, you're overcharging, everybody overcharges for this. And second of all, it's not going to work on everybody's machine. Hyperspin, uh, it counts on countless emulators pre-configured to various different resolutions, screen formats, controller devices, all that kind of good stuff. And you can try and put in as many third-party programs, apps, and all that kind of stuff to try and help people out. But at the end of the day, they're going to end up having to resort to starting from scratch. Yes, they can maybe be able to use your ROMs, but in most cases, they'll all be ill-named. They will all uh, need renaming. God knows how many times we've been through that process. All your artwork will all be old. All your artwork will all be ill-named because they would have had to match the actual games. The databases won't add up. Your emulators, Jesus Christ. When I see these pre figure drives and I look at the emulators, they, I think Jesus put them together. That's how old these things are. I mean, Jesus Christ, simple little things not done. And to, the, the worst thing is that once you've paid for this, and once you actually go through the process of actually having to start again from scratch, not only have you just paid through an arm and a leg just to get a drive that you could possibly get a very much cheaper, um, but you have to start then downloading stuff. You will then more than likely, to help yourself out in the long run, have to then buy a membership at all these sites to try and get yourself back on par to what you were. So not only have you lost considerable amount of time, considerable amount of money, but you then have to start from scratch and pay more out in the long run. Jesus. But that's not the worst of it. That isn't my warning. That's not what I brought you here for today. My warning is that I fix drives for you guys from time to time. If if your sob story is bad enough, I will sometimes help people out. And sometimes, I mean, I'm being handed like drives. It's almost one a day that I get handed. And I try my best to help you guys out to at least get it to a stable state where you can enjoy it. Because these things have been purchased, not just for for guys in their rooms, for the for the expensive people to put in the arcade cabinets to show off to all the mates. Some of these drives have been purchased for families, for their children, for people who are naive to this scene. And 
they open this up and they expect everything that you advertise on your YouTube channel. They don't expect to have to go through the kind of troubles, turmoil and everything to get this running. When a kid unwraps his present on Christmas Day and expects a hyperspin drive or something like that or on his birthday or just as a gift, he expects to go off what you said on your advertisements which is plug it straight in and you can get straight into it all when in reality it's not that that doesn't happen guys like I said you more or less have to start from scratch you more or less have to plow months and weeks just to repair this drive whereas if you started from scratch you could probably get this up and running within a weekend no problem no issue without getting pounds out of pocket but again, we digress. That isn't the thing that's really knocking me here. The fact is that these... I don't want to swear too much because I've been getting told off for being naughty and swearing. But some of these guys that are out there, they have put in... Um, I can't talk too much about it because it will give people ideas. And that's what's so terrible about the internet. But they've put stuff in there, basically, to not only read your keystrokes... So he basically, it's a key mapper. Not in the key mapper, it's in the terms of able to use joysticks on keys and things like that, if you've been into that kind of stuff before. When I'm talking about key mapper, I'm talking about more of the hacker side of it all. So basically, every keystroke that you put into your keyboard, it will record those keystrokes. And you may think, well, that's a bit bad, because what else I do is go on to, you know, play my games and stuff, so all my keys are just my controls. Some people actually do more than that on their computers, guys. Some people log into their bank accounts. Some people check their emails. Some people, you know, send private messages, log into Facebook, social media, YouTube accounts, all that kind of stuff. And every time you put something in there, it's quite obvious, because... <laughs> What do you always do? You either put in number one, your username, or number two, your email. And that always goes conjunction. So as soon as that at symbol pops up in the, a list of what's happening that day, and it's got .com at the end of it, or .whatever, and then the next thing, you've got some random thing with a capital letter and a couple of numbers and a, and a, a pet's name or something. It's obvious that that is your password to something and your email to something also. So please, guys think common sense here you are giving people the invitation to put things onto your computers and in the past few weeks I have noticed that people have not only got a key mapper on there but one specific company has been sending it as part of their sync program up to whatever it is the hub is you know the basically it's recording every keystroke and on a weekly basis it's transmitting all that information to that person and he can read everything that you have written in that past week. Now I know that there's loads of different things. This should be popping up on malware and stuff like that. But remember guys, when we install Hyperspin and especially this guy on his install videos, he tells you to uninstall specific parts of virus scanner for specific parts of hyperspin and I hate to have to say this because it brings down so much doom and gloom on what is should be a fun scene but he's doing this and basically what it does is like I said it records your keystrokes it sends it up to him everything that you've done on that computer it knows everything guys you know it's not it doesn't matter if on your website it's you know fizzled out it's got them little black dots or anything it records the keystrokes not the image on the screen guys it then records it into plain text and sends it up in the form of a text file in this case now you may think well how the hell do I know that well for those of you who probably don't know much about me I used to I still am in a way um, utilized by a, a certain company and I was an ethical uh, what I, it, I went under a different name, but it, I was a kind of ethical hacker. My key area was communications. So I am actually crap <laughs> at programming and coding and all that stuff. I'm crap at it, but my key area is communications. So when I seen this program that this guy put in, I thought, oh, you know, he's managing to sync up his program. Uh, his drives or whatever to this hyperspin setup and to be honest I thought that's not a bad idea but I know so many pitfalls and all that and that's going off topic 
but this guy had actually made it so he's put in a key mapper because you already expect a key mapper to be in there because basically you're key mapping your controls to joysticks often enough and I didn't pick up on that but what I did pick up on was the fact that this program was sending a file from his computer up to his and I thought oh, hang on a minute that's not right and the communication things start going ringing in my head and all that kind of stuff so I delved deeper and that's when I uncovered this guys and I have now found it in four drives which has been sent in the last two weeks and alarm bills are ringing I hate this kind of stuff going on I hate it I mean this guy is using stuff from I don't know 1997 era kind of stuff it's well outdated but because he's telling you to drop your virus scanners in certain places and it all sounds legit and it's all recording your keys as it is and you've got this sync program so your firewall's not detecting it or anything like that it's a bad way of doing it and I don't want to there are a lot more detail that I can go into but I don't want to advertise this to everybody because I don't want to get the naughty people ideas and I've probably waffled on about this for so long now in this video I only wanted to make a short one but please guys please don't get caught out about this do not buy these bloody configured drives of people first off they do not work second of all they will cost you more money third of all they will cost you even more time because first of all you gotta fix it then you gotta rebuild it and then last of all that also their integrity is completely out the window they don't care about anything other than your money no matter how friendly no matter what warranties they offer to you online and all that kind of good stuff on YouTube channels on internet sites on Twitter or whatever they will not give a damn about you they just want your cash and as soon as that cash is handed over and they are no longer liable for any um, rebates or transactions or anything like that, that's it you're out Catch you later. Enjoy what I've given you. It may work if you're lucky, but I don't even care because I've got your cash. Oh, that was quite the rant, guys, wasn't it? And I do apologize about that, but it angers me so much because it's people like, I wouldn't say people like me because I'm no hero. I just did this as a hobby, guys. Uh, but it is, it's up to people who plow all this time into, you know, bringing this to you and every day I'm on like the hyperspin site and people help out no end people who don't even have time who have families themselves they, they don't get no money out of this I don't get a, a dime out of, of people's hyperspin setups you know, you know every so often somebody sends me a donation which I plow straight back in to hardware that could help you in other words you know someone just gave me a large donation the other day thank you very much for that I plowed it into getting a new microphone because I know that me using this headset all the time sounds like crap and everything that I get from this whether it be donations I plow straight back into you or helping to recover people's drives which have been ruined by these you know these people doing this kind of stuff sorry guys this is just such a rant but it has angered me so much today and it, it really does upset me that not only can they uh, rip people off like this but they can also um, take their livelihood Christmas is coming up could you imagine if you know not only had the kid not got his stuff for Christmas Day but now you've just cleared out mum and dad's bank account yeah nice one cheers for that thank you thank you for making such an effort to build this scene into what it could be sorry guys I'm probably getting quite angry now so I'm gonna leave it but please share this video guys not only to get the word out about fixing the stuff that's on there but to try and bring some awareness and if ever you see anything like this don't bring it to my attention I don't want to be involved in any of this I uh, I would say every country no matter where you live uh, you've always got your cyber crime agencies whether it be a form of the police a form of the government or whatever get in touch with those it's like the Wild West on the internet it really is the the law is there but they need it blindly put in front of them you know there's too much internet and not enough agencies looking after it um, bring it to their attention not mine okay guys I'm gonna wrap it up there but happy gaming all <laughs> think positive think positive by doing this video I may have stopped some people actually being caught by this so that's a positive thing to bring out of this so let's think positive guys let's all hold hand and light candles and vigil about it <laughs> okay.
Okay, <laughs> waffle over. I'm going to hand you over to my new sponsor, by the way. Um, so look forward to the <laughs> look forward to them and the the sponsorship. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye. So was it nice at the North Pole? Well, it's a vast, unspoiled landscape. Incredibly beautiful. So why did you leave? Hello? Bird's eye potato waffles made with real mashed potato. All you need for a great tea time.